Hello and welcome to the Blackboard on ASTM C138 for the unit weight, yield, and air content gravimetric of freshly mixed concrete. So here at the Blackboard we go through calculations that people may not have caught the first time through and we do go a little bit slower so let's go ahead and get started. So what is unit weight? Unit weight is the weight of concrete per a given unit volume. In this case, pounds per cubic foot. One of the goals of these standards is to make sure that everybody reports in the same units. So here we are always going to report in pounds per cubic foot. So as an example, if somebody had a two cubic foot bucket in the field, they'd weigh up 300 pounds of concrete, yet their unit weight or density would be 150 pounds per cubic foot. If somebody else the next day was working with the same concrete, but they had a half a cubic foot bucket, they would weigh up 75 pounds of concrete, but they would also have 150 pounds per cubic foot of concrete. And if on the third day somebody else had a quarter cubic foot bucket, they'd have 37.5 pounds of concrete but the unit weight remains 150 pounds per cubic foot. Now yield is the volume of concrete produced from a given batch. Now you may have designed for one cubic yard, but did you actually get one cubic yard? So the yield is going to tell us that. The units here, however, can change. We can have a yield in cubic feet. We can have a yield in cubic yards. We can have a yield in cubic meters or we can have a yield in cubic feet per cubic yard. So let's go ahead and do an example. Let's assume that the volume of our measure or our bucket is 0.49 cubic feet. We've weighed up that bucket and the bucket weighs 20.2 pounds. We've now filled it with concrete and the bucket and the concrete weigh 93.5 pounds. And we know that we've designed for an 8 cubic yard batch, and we know that the total weight of all of our materials is 32,300 pounds. So from these numbers, we're going to calculate the density in pounds per cubic foot. This is the unit weight. And then we're going to get the yield per batch in cubic feet, the yield per batch in cubic yards, the yield per batch in cubic feet per cubic yard, as well as all of the relative yield calculations. So here, the first thing we want to do is figure out what is just the weight of our concrete. And we do that by taking the 93.5 pounds. This is the M subscript C, or the weight of the measure filled with concrete, minus the weight of the measure, or M subscript M, and we wind up with 73.2 pounds of concrete. And we know that the volume of our measure was 0.49 cubic feet. So if we do the division, 73.2 pounds of concrete divided by 0.49 cubic feet, we wind up with 149.4 pounds per cubic foot of concrete. So now that we have our unit weight, let's go ahead and do our first yield calculation. The first yield calculation that we're going to do is the yield of the batch in cubic feet. This is simply M, the weight of all the materials batched, divided by D, the density, or the unit weight that we just achieved. So here we had 32,300 pounds of material. Our unit weight was 149.4 pounds per cubic foot. So if we do the calculation, pounds will eliminate pounds, and we wind up with just cubic feet. And if we do the calculation out, then we wind up with 216.2 cubic feet of material. Now to calculate the yield in cubic yards, the equation is actually similar. Here we're going to take the total weight of all the materials batched and divide it by the unit weight times 27. 
Now the 27 comes from the amount of cubic feet in a cubic yard. So if we look at the denominator here, we can see that cubic feet can eliminate cubic feet. And if we do the multiplication in the denominator, we wind up with 4,033.8 pounds of material per cubic yard. And if we do the division, pounds will eliminate pounds, and we wind up with exactly 8 cubic yards of material. Now this yield calculation is yield in cubic feet per cubic yards. And to do the actual calculation is actually quite simple. What we want to do is take our yield per batch in cubic feet, which we know is 216.2 cubic feet, and divide it by the volume per batch for which the concrete was designed. Here, it was designed for 8 cubic yards. Now, in reality, we got 8 cubic yards. But remember, the actual calculation is the yield per batch per cubic foot divided by the volume of concrete for which the batch was designed. So here is our equation, 216.2 cubic feet divided by 8 cubic yards. And if we do the division, we wind up with 27.0 cubic feet per cubic yard, which is exactly where we should be. Now lastly, we may be asked to do relative yields. Relative yields are actually quite simple. To do a relative yield, all we do is we take the yield per batch that we actually got and divide it by the yield per batch for which we designed. So we can do this in cubic feet, cubic yards, or cubic feet per cubic yard. So if we wanted to do this in cubic feet, we would simply take the 216.2 cubic feet that we actually got and divide it by the 216 cubic feet that we designed for. Now the 216 cubic feet that we designed for is simply coming from 27 times 8 cubic yards. And we wind up with a relative yield of 1.00. If we wanted to do this in cubic yards, we take the 8 cubic yards that we actually got divided by the 8 cubic yards that we designed for. Again, a relative yield of 1.00. And the same is true for the relative yield of cubic feet per cubic yard. We should wind up at 1.00. Now, many certification programs do not allow you to use your book when you're doing these calculations. So write down all this information and try this one on your own. And then I will give you the results at the end of this. So if you want to pause the video, try to calculate the yield in cubic feet, yield per cubic yard, yield per cubic foot per cubic yard, and then all the relative yields. So the first thing you should have calculated was your unit weight or density, and I hope you wound up at 139.0 pounds per cubic foot. We get this by taking the 90.7, which is the weight of the concrete and the measure, subtracting from that the 19.8, which is the weight of just the measure, we wind up with 70.9 pounds of concrete, we want to take the 70.9 pounds of concrete and divide it by the volume of our bucket, which was 0.51 cubic feet. And if we do out the division, we wind up at 139.0 pounds per cubic foot. Now, for the yield per batch in cubic feet, I hope you came up to 250.7 cubic feet. We get this by taking the weight of all the materials batched and dividing it by the unit weight. So here, pounds would eliminate pounds, leaving us with 250.7 cubic feet of material. Now, if you did not notice this in the calculation for yield per batch in cubic feet, you should certainly notice it here, and that is the fact that we have over-yielded. 
So here, to calculate the yield per batch in cubic yards, what we do is we take the weight of all the materials batched, and we want to divide it by the unit weight times 27 cubic feet per cubic yard. So here we can quickly reduce this equation in the denominator as the cubic feet will cancel each other out. And if we do the multiplication, we come out to 3,753 pounds of concrete per cubic yard. And if we go ahead and do the division, pounds will cancel pounds, and we wind up with 9.3 cubic yards of material, again, slightly over yielding. Now for the yield per batch cubic feet per cubic yard, I hope that you came up to 27.9 cubic feet per cubic yard. We get this from the cubic feet generated in our mix, 250.7, and we divide it by what the batch was designed for, which was 9.0 cubic yards, giving us 27.9 cubic feet per cubic yard. And finally, for our relative yields, again, all we do here is we take what we actually got and divide it by what we designed for. So here, our relative yields should have been 1.03 because for our cubic feet, we actually got 250.7 cubic feet. If we divide this by what we designed for, which was 243 cubic feet, we come out to 1.03 as our relative yield. Relative yield using cubic yards, same thing. We over yielded 9.3 cubic yards divided by what we designed for, 9 cubic yards, relative yield 1.03. And finally, relative yield using cubic feet per cubic yard, we got 27.9 cubic feet per cubic yard. We designed for 27 cubic feet per cubic yard a relative yield of 1.03. So a question that frequently comes up is, what is wrong with overyielding? You wind up with more concrete, and isn't that a good thing? Well, let's take a look at that by calculating the actual cement content. Again, in this particular example, we designed for 9 cubic yards, but we overyielded to 9.3 cubic yards. So the calculation here is C equals C subscript B divided by Y, where C is the actual cement content in kilograms per cubic meter or pounds per cubic yard. C subscript B is the mass of cement batched in kilograms or in pounds. And Y is, again, the yield. This is the volume of concrete which was produced in either cubic meters or cubic yards. So sticking with our example here, again, we designed for nine cubic yards of concrete. We yielded 9.3 cubic yards of concrete. Let's assume that this concrete was a six and a half sack mix, meaning that we wanted 611 pounds of cement in each cubic yard, and we wanted that 611 pounds of cement for strength or for durability, or for any one of the other many properties that cement provides to our concrete. So let's assume that we batched perfectly and our C subscript B is 5,499 pounds. This is coming from the 611 pounds of cement that we want in each cubic yard, and we designed for nine cubic yards. So if we return to our equation here, we have 5,499 pounds of cement was batched out, and we're going to divide this by the 9.3 cubic yards of material that we yielded, is going to give us 591 pounds of cement per cubic yard, 20 pounds per cubic yard less than what we actually designed for. So where did the cement go? Don't forget that concrete is placed into geometric shapes of a specific volume. The moment that volume is filled, the truck drives away. And in that truck is going to be that additional concrete, as well as the cement, which was supposed to be in your forms. And lastly, let's take a look at the gravimetric air calculations. 
The formula for this is simply the theoretical density on an air-free basis minus the actual density divided by the theoretical density on an air-free basis times 100. So if it makes it any easier, think of it as the heavier number minus the lighter number divided by the heavier number times 100. And here we have 155.4 pounds per cubic foot is our theoretical density minus 146.8, which is our actual density, divided by 155.4, again the theoretical density, times 100 gives us an air content gravimetric of 5.5%. So go ahead and try these two on your own, and you may want to pause the video before moving on to the answers in the next slide. And I hope you got 2.5% on the first one and 6.9% on the second one. We're rounding the second one uh, up to 6.9%. If you didn't get these numbers, please go back and try it again because this is almost assuredly going to be a question on any certification exam.